Colorista 2 has two power masks, whereas the previous version only had one. And it might not be instantly obvious why this is a cool thing, but I'm going to show you a little bit here. So I'm going to start, as usual, by doing a little bit of an overall correction on the shot. And I'm going to try to get some richness back into Eric's skin tones there. It's looking a little pasty. Maybe boost the saturation of his skin just a bit. All right, so before, after, pretty good. Probably could even have a little more contrast. Maybe I'll pull the uh, shadows down a little bit. Okay, nice. All right, so we got a lot of bite to the shot. Just gonna pull a little saturation out of it now overall. Okay, nice. Um, but you know, the shot isn't uh, very mysterious. Just scrub around here a little bit. And comes in, looks furtive, as is his custom, and goes to leave. All right, so, you know, I don't know. The shot, again, I didn't use any lights when I shot this. I'm not super happy with the look. Um, I would reach for my traditional kind of vignette, but the camera's moving a little bit here, and it's not quite a vignette that I'm after. What I really wish is just that the light was gradated off a little bit on this back wall. So let's go into secondary and see what we can do. I'm going to take uh, a rectangular power mask, invert it. I'm just going to drop secondary exposure down considerably here. Let's just see what happens when we nudge this around a little bit. So here's me kind of trying to fade the light off on this back wall in a way that feels kind of natural and believable. But what I really want to do is I really want to kind of put it down here with a little more feather on it. Just a little more. Fortunately, I'm starting to eat into his head a little bit. That's not working. So what I'm going to do is go to the master. Go to the master power mask. Ellipse. Now again, by default, oops, by default the master power mask is not uh, configured to do what I want it to do. But we've got all these modes for it. Uh, right now it's set to restrict the entire effect. Um, I could join the secondary like we did uh, before, but that's not what I want to do here. Um, I could add to secondary. Oops. But again, that's not useful because I'm adding more darkness. Oh, but wait. I could invert it. All right. Now I'm inverting it, but now it's the only... Uh, brightness area there. So what I really want to do is I want to restrict secondary oops, but with the inverted control. So now when you move it around on here you get nothing. When you move it around outside or in you know inside the area of the secondary I'm I'm basically turning off the secondary effect. If you think of the secondary effect as being the darkening effect, I'm turning it off wherever it's inside the blue uh, ellipse. So now let's just make this a little more head shaped. Just like that. Now, let's check this out. Now, this uh, obviously is going to need to be tracked into place. It does not, it uh, needs to stick to his head. Now, I could set a couple keyframes for this. We've made this a little bit easier um, because now we just have one um, center parameter here, just this usual kind of effects control. I don't know how well you can see it, but um, so I'm going to uh, just, I could just manually start keyframing that. But the truth is, I have him moving, and I have the back wall moving, and I think that this effect can be pretty credible. Here's what it looks like uh, on my hero frame where I did my work before, after. I really like what's going on here. In fact, it's working so well that I think I could actually go into my secondary uh, and drop the uh, mids down a little bit to really emphasize the effect. Um, okay, so uh, before, after. Nice. Um, but yeah, it's going to need to get tracked. So, um, let's go into animation and, uh, track motion. Now I'm going to hop back to the comp view, turn on the effect real quick, because it just so happens that the right placement for this, uh, master power mask ha is on the corner of Eric's eye. Um, it doesn't have to be that way. It just sort of happened that way. So that's going to make it really easy to track. So I'm just going to put the tracker on 
his the corner of his eyebrow right there and uh, uh, let's um, we'll start by going forward it's pretty good we'll go back to our hero keyframe and then we'll go backwards from there and it held pretty well okay so now let's go back oops I got to apply it. So let's, where are we going to apply it? Let's um, the uh, edit the target. We're going to get a list of anything that we could put it on. It ha so happens that color is to two. Center is uh, short for uh, secondary power mass center. And we're going to hit apply. And this stupid thing comes up that says apply dimensions X and Y. Of course, we're going to select both because why wouldn't we? I hate that thing. I think there's a preference for turning it off. Okay, so now... I've got my crazy extra keyframes here. Let's check out how well that worked. Oops, I did the wrong one. <laughs> you were probably ahead of me on that one. Uh, let's go back into there and we'll select that and we're gonna actually uh, edit target. We wanted to do it to the master. Okay, apply. All right, just so you know that these demos aren't canned. Well, obviously I don't want to uh, track <laughs> the uh, vignette to him, but what I would like to track it to the motion of the shot. So um, I'm going to track this little point, I think, on that pipe back there, but let's look at where the center of it wants to live because I accidentally moved it. So uh, let's go into... I'm going to go into Colorista 2 here and... Uh, clear out these keyframes from center so all right so it was somewhere down here right so if you look at the center point it's actually just below his collar actually outside the frame of the shot so let's go back and actually let's go to frame the first frame of the shot uh, maybe a not such a blurry frame. let's go to the last frame of the shot so I think we're saying that it's still that sort of collar intersection there okay good so again we're going to select track motion that's going to create a new tracker so let's we'll put the tracker on the pipe give it enough room to grab everything but then the uh, control point is going to be down here so you can move the control the point you know where the tracking data is actually going to get stuck into keyframes down here separately from where you move the uh, overall point they do move together when you grab this I don't know how well you can see that little crosshair but it's down here where I would hope it would be uh, and we're going to analyze backwards since we're on the first frame. And it did a pretty good job. So now let's edit that target. Color story. Now we want the first one. Apply. Okay. So now we have the yellow vignette stuck to the wall and the blue vignette stuck to his face. This gives you a sense of why it was important. You know, we always had the um, the uh, power mask effect, uh, you know, to, to modulate one colorista, um, but I and you could stack coloristas on top of each other, but you could never do something like this. This really makes it possible to achieve more complex results using only squares and circles uh, within the effect itself. And again, it's not like if you wanted to do complex masking, you couldn't go into After Effects and use an adjustment layer and do whatever kind of masks you want, or even uh, some of the new fancy features in After Effects CS5, like the, uh, uh, the Roto Brush, uh, which is super cool and super handy in conjunction with Colorista. But uh, a lot of times, you know, all you need is the basics, and you can do them in After Effects, or you can do them right inside of uh, Final Cut or uh, Premiere. Uh, so I hope that uh, helps clear up a little bit about how you can use power masks powerfully inside of Colorista 2 uh, and use them in conjunction with each other to achieve complex effects.